All right, I'm gonna try one take Drake this. So, yo, it's Tog from We Make Best. Back again with another Kano video. And today's video, I'm gonna kind of bite the bullet here and do a complete Kano combo mechanics guide. So, I've got a document here. I've got every single Kano combo that you can go through pretty much, 14 pages worth. And we're gonna be covering all of them, their use cases, how much resources they cost, what enables them, how much damage, and the big thing is the multipliers of each one. So, not only that, I'm also gonna cover exactly how you'd want to do them in game as well. So, might be a bit of a long video, I guess we'll find out, but let's just get straight into it. So, first off, I'll probably pop on the screen right here. I have a little formula on how to exactly do any sort of combo, whatever your hand is, you can figure out if you can do a combo. Uh, yeah, so I'll pop that up on the screen. I won't go over it too much because I'm going to be doing it like multiple times during this video when I'm going through the combos. But feel free to pause on the video, take a screenshot, or actually, I'll yeah, I'll link this document in the description below so you can just look at it there. But that's what I'm going to be using on how to do every single combo. So we can just get into the meat of the content here. And we'll start off with the fundamental ones, then I'll move to the beginner combos, I'll call them, and then we'll do the much more advanced shit later on, so. But before getting into it, I just wanna thank Midtown Game Exchange for sponsoring us. Midtown Game Exchange are your one-stop shop for all flesh and blood cards at literally the best prices that you can find on the internet. And to top that off, they're actually running a store-wide 15% off everything from the November 24th until the 27th this month. So make sure to head down to midtowngameexchange.com to get whatever cards you need at literally the best prices that you can find anywhere. So once again, thank you guys so much for supporting the channel, but let's get back to the video. Uh, so we'll start it off with the wildfire blazing combo. This is probably like the most standard of combo. This is why Kano is a deck. So all it is is wildfire into X spell in the middle. So whatever we hit off the top and then it's going to be blazing as well. So how we're going to be able to do this is, or at least how I like to do it is we need to figure out how much this top card costs. And then we also need to see what color we get off rags before we commit too much. So since this should cost nine resources, if you hit a zero cost, if you hit a two cost, then it costs 11 resources. This is important to note because you should have uh, nine resources from your blues. Rags will give you one more, no matter what you flip off the top. If you hit a red, if you hit a blue, then you get two more, which means you're at 12. And then you should also have your chest piece available as well. So you can have a maximum of 13. So this, this combo costing nine, if you hit a zero cost, is very good because that means if you hit a red off rags, you'll have 11 resources available. So nine from your hand, one from the rags, one from the chest, which is 11, which means that you can pump the wildfire twice. And why that's important is because the multipliers on wildfire for this specific combo is plus five damage per buff or minus five damage per AB. So. Yeah, that was a lot of info. Let's just get straight into how I like to do it. So first off, I always like to activate Kano first just to see what the top card is and how much it costs. So in this case, it's going to be a zero cost, which is premium, um, zero cost. And now all we have to do is get the information from our rags now. So it's very, very important to be able to get your information from your combo, how much it costs, and then how much resources you actually have after your rags before we commit to activating Crucible and Wildfire. So, with that said, since this is a zero cost, you're pretty safe to activate Crucible here, but if you know that you're gonna fully commit, you can also just activate Storm Striders here. So, I'll just activate Storm Striders here because I know I'm gonna commit. That leaves us with two floating. I like to respond to the Storm Striders. Don't let them resolve yet, because if you play a Wizard card randomly in the middle, you may be forced to then it's gonna eat up that effect. So we'll just hold priority on these. Then gonna activate Kano again. So Kano goes on the stack. We're gonna to respond to that by activating Ragamuffins. Since we've only got one card in hand, we're gonna draw a card. It's a blue, and then we'll put a card back on top, which is the blazing. So Rags is done. Kano activates, banishing that blazing that we know about. And then always after the Rags, I like to pause and then just count everything. So 
We don't need, we've already paid for Storm Striders, so we only need to pay two for Wildfire, and both of these cost zero. So we only need two resources, which is very nice, because we have two floating, so that pays for the Wildfire, and that leaves us with three in hand and one from our chest. So we've got four pumps, which is very nice. That's why this combo is very nice when you can hit a zero cost, because you just get maximum amount of pumps. So we get four pumps, so we'll activate the Crucible, that costs one. Then we'll play the Storm Strider, oh, let the Storm Striders resolve, then play the Wildfire. Pitching the blue, we go to two floating. Uh, Metacarpus will trigger, and then we'll pay one on that. So now this will hit for six. And then we can play the, oh, get out of the way. Then we can play the Aether Dart here, activate Metacarpus on that as well. So that will hit for one, two, plus six, which is eight. And then we can even activate the Spellfire, and then go blazing with Metacarpus on top as well. So, that's a lot of damage. So it should be 22 damage minimum, but since we got four buffs, we get plus five multiplier per buff on Wildfire, plus two on the middle, and plus one on the blazing. So what that should equal to is 22 plus two buffs is 32, and then plus one buff here is 34, and then 35 with the buff on blazing as well. So hopefully that's not too confusing. It may be, but it will all make sense. But now I'd like to cover when do you actually really go for this combo in game. Most of the times, the, when you go for this combo, it's because you have Blazing in your arsenal. Um, and you're kind of forced to go. So like I said, if you, if you hit like a card that costs resources off the top when you're going for this combo, then you lose a lot of your buffs. And losing your buffs means you lose a lot of overall damage because, like I said, if you put a buff on the wildfire, it's plus five. Whereas if we're paying two resources to deal to, yeah, you deal one more damage than the Aether Dart, but you lose two resources, which means you lose 10 damage, if that makes sense. So it makes it a little bit unreliable. That's why you don't see many people going for it. That's why you're kind of forced into doing it when Blazing's in the arsenal. Um, also, blind flip combos are just unreliable because of things like E-Pots, Nourishines, uh, Eye of Ophidia, and yeah, just the expensive spells as well. So, makes it a little bit flippy whether it's actually going to kill or not. That's why you don't see that many people going for this type of combo. But, that's pretty much it. Pretty basic. That's your standard combo. You're usually looking to go Wildfire, any spell, into Blazing. And we'll cover the next one, which... Pretty much shows that off perfectly uh, go like that which is we'll go over the lesson line next so that one's your standard combo this one's going to be pretty much a bread and butter combo this one instead it costs 10 resources because that middle spell is guaranteed to cost one from the lesson cost 10 resources it's going to deal 26 damage and it's going to have the same amplifiers of or multipliers of plus five plus two and then plus one on blazing um, Great thing about this combo is Wildfire could be in your hand and Lessons in the in the bin as well, which is not bad. I also like this combo because you're not forced to go into this combo. So if your opponent just has a fine turn, but you're not pressured to do a combo or they're holding up a lot of resources, you're happy to just go to your own turn and just go like Crucible, Lessons, maybe strip a card out of them, find another Lessons, activate Kano, shoot it again. If they don't AB this, you have another Kano for a Blazing deal insane damage so I'll always love the these types of combos that have that type of flexibility and whether we actually have to combo or not but with that said this also does a lot more damage than the standard combo because we're guaranteed this middle spell does three damage pretty much and it only costs one so it's a low costing more damage than your zero for ones so more buffs and more damage itself which is super nice so how I like to go through with this combo uh, it's probably more stock standard if the wildfire is in here, but there's not really a difference. How I like to do this one is I always like to do my Kano first, and then I like to respond to this. So since it costs 10 resources, that usually means you can get one buff out of your Crucible pretty safely, uh, even if you hit a red, as long as you got the three blues in your hand, because like I said, three blues plus the red from rags is 10, and then 11 from here, so you always get one buff. So I like to activate Crucible here. Don't have to commit the Striders, just in case something happens and we want to change our combo, you know? So do it like that. Should have two floating. We'll respond to the Crucible, activate Kano again, 
and then we'll respond to this kind of activation with the ragamuffins as well. Then we get to draw a card. We find the blue, we put the lessons back on top. So ragamuffins resolves, we'll let the Kano resolve banishing the lessons, and then we'll let this crucible resolve. We're gonna to respond to this first Kano though. We're gonna just, this is gonna be our blazing to grab after the lessons. And so like I always say, after the rags, make sure we do all our math. So we need three for Stormstrider's wildfire. We need one from lessons, and that's it. So how much do we got? We've got two floating, three in hand, and then one from chest. So we've got six and we only need four. So we get two buffs on top of this crucible. So two buffs is huge. We're gonna activate Storm Striders. Then we get to play the wildfire. We'll have two floating. Metacarpus will be our first buff. So this will come in for six. Activate our Spellfire, we go to two. We get to play this with Metacarpus. That will pay for both. Six, and then this should come in for ten. So four plus the six from Wildfire. This will search out the Blazing, put it on top, and then let this Kano finally resolve. And then this will come in for six plus six, which is twelve, plus ten, which is twenty-two. And so all up, the Wildfire Lessons Blazing combo should be twenty-six. But then if we add in the multipliers, it should be twenty-six plus ten from double multiplier, so it's thirty-six and then plus two from the multiplier on here, which is 38. Whew, okay, so hopefully <laughs> that, <laughs> that makes sense as well, because these are the most basic combos in Kano. So <laughs> hopefully you're following along. I think some things to note here though is, uh, I think the first one I want to point out is if you have an E-pot and you hit like these resources, there's actually a wasted resource in here. So would only be able to pay for one more Metacarpus because we've only got one more spell, leaving us with one extra floating. So that gives us a bit of leeway on maybe we can commit for a combo without three reds and maybe we hit a yellow off racks and then we can still afford everything. But yeah, I thought that was a little bit of an interesting thing to point out there. But like I said, this is your most flexible combo. Flexible not only because you can just go to your own turn and it's a decent turn with lessons, or you can just deal a high damage combo if they give you the chance. So you get to stay really flexible like that. But also if our hand was, if we reset this all, uh, say we have a different red in our hand. So if we have a red in our hand instead of the three blues, well now we can just pivot our turn into being something like, okay, now we'll just use our lesson for resources instead. And because that's gonna be better than going for three, six, seven, eight and then nine if we hit a uh, red off rags going for a really flippy lesson line if you know what i mean because now if we commit for the lesson line and we have two blues and one red and we hit a red off rags that means we just whiff our combo and then you just lose the game at that point so that's why i really like lessons uh just because you can pivot it into being your resource card and just going for uh eight the flare combo instead and just hoping that the top of your decks probably hopefully more cheaper than what you'd like it to be. So that's combo number two, your bread and butter combo, Wildfire Lessons. Okay, and then we'll go into the next one. So the next one is Wildfire Spindle, I guess we'll go over next. And then, so Wildfire Spindle. So this one has even more damage than the lesson line. So this one should do 28 damage minimum, but the downside is it costs 11 resources. So like I said, you pretty much have 11 resources guaranteed with red off rags. But the thing is, when it, your combo is exactsies for how much resources you have, that means you don't get buffs. And I think we've already stressed enough the multipliers. So multiplier is five whenever you can buff the wildfire. So you really prefer to get your two buffs off. Because um, if you lose, lose two buffs, you lose 10 damage, which is a lot of damage. So yeah, usually pretty risky to go for this combo. I like to go for it in games where I know the game is gonna be super quick. So you're not actually guaranteed if you're gonna get another shot at drawing into a combo hand. So I like to just take my chances with it. The great thing with it though is, yeah, it's got the highest damage potential and it's actually more consistent than it's not. So being able to opt 10 cards if you do get the buffs Opting 10 off the spindle, you don't only find blazings because you can also find tomes, you can also find gazes to help you find, go even deeper and find more more blazings, things like that. 
but also if you just find a tome and then a couple zero costs now you can tome set up two blues for it kano kano into two blues that are zero costs as well and just like abuse the wildfire damage as well so you don't have to exactly find blazing but most times you will just find the blazing anyway so i do want to note all of that but yeah so the main risk is you have 11 resources, but you really want your rags to hit a blue. So if your rags doesn't hit a blue, you're losing a lot of damage. So you need to keep that in mind when you're going for this combo. Pretty much only do it for like the super fast ones. I'll do it into like Lexi. I'll do it into Spell Void Heroes. I'll do it into, uh, that's about it. Oh, maybe Fire, things like that. But let's go over exactly how I like to do it. So for this one, since it does cost 11 resources, it's a bit more scary to pitch into the crucible so instead i'm going to activate kano here activate kano we're going to respond to this we're going to save this kano for after we play the spindle so respond to this here we can just activate our boots now we'll have two floating and then again we're going to respond to this make sure we don't let him resolve in case we need to play a different spell before we play the wildfire from arsenal doesn't come up much but it can come up so responding to this, we're going to activate Kano again, go down to one card, and then respond to that, activate Ragamuffins, draw a card, then we get to put a card back on top, which is the lesson. This is resolved. Let the Kano resolve, banishing that spindle. And then after rags, do your math. So we've already got the striders resolved, so we only need two for wildfire, two for spindle, and then we've got two from floating, three in our hand, and one on our chest. So all up, we've got for six resources and we only need four that means we get two buffs and that's when this line is insane so getting two buffs not only are we getting plus 10 damage on our wildfire but we're also getting plus two opt on our spindle which could be the blazing or not so super big super big we're going to activate our crucible here shoot our wildfire pitching this we go to two floating and then use our two spare resources for the metacarpus as well so that leaves us with two floating this will deal six activate this we go to two resources shoot the spindle here this will come in for 10 so four plus the six from wildfire and we've got none floating so 10 you get to opt 10 and then pretty much set up if you see tomes you just want to set up tome blue blue into anything or if you see the blazing like don't bm your opponent just grab the blazing and kill them put them out of their misery <laughs> uh I know some insane ones as well if you find tomes and then sonic booms so tome blue blue kano into sonic boom that hits another sonic boom into the blazing something like that i've found lethal or exactly lethal off of that stuff as well so yeah you can pretty much pop the fuck off with this line or if you find none of them somehow and you're just super unlucky and jesus hates you well yeah then you can just completely whiff and then you ask yourself why are you even born but yeah so this line's very good i like it obviously there'll be some times that it will whiff but that just comes with going with the chances of this line anyway so take your wins as you take your losses but it's all good so yeah this one mainly do it in the super fast matchups when you know you're not really going to be able to get another turn to set it up if somehow they end the turn with like a lot of resources floating and it doesn't really look like you want to go for the shot right now. The great thing is it's just like the lesson line. You're happy to go to your turn with a spindle four blues, you know, because it's probably better than lesson. Not only are you going to be able to like crucible play the spindle on our own turn, pitching one of these blues and then using the opt effect to set up another combo turn for your next turn. But you're also going to have some spare blues to activate Kano as well after that. And then maybe shoot another two cost present big damage, strip cards from their hand. Now they can't really AB while also committing to kill you. So yeah, that's the biggest upside with this combo is the potential to be able to combo, but like not actually sending the combo is probably its PowerPoint. So hopefully that makes sense, but yeah, that's the wildfire spindle combo. Next we'll go over the flare combo. So this one is one of my personal favorites. Uh, mainly because it's a cheap combo so how we discussed with the spindle combo when it does cost 11 resources minimum it can cost your buffs on wildfire whereas flare since it costs 10 you're pretty safe that you will most likely be able to hit your buffs for your wildfire on this combo but then with the buffs the amp the 
multipliers are actually different because there's no blazing in this combo. So instead of wildfire buffs equaling, equaling five damage, it's equaling four instead. Uh, pretty complicated on why that is, but so wildfire will deal one extra damage, which puts one extra damage on the flare, and then the flare does another extra damage on the last spell. So say the last spell was not blazing, so it's just a random lessons or some shit. So one extra damage from wildfire gives one extra damage to flare and one extra damage to lesson. So that's already three. But then buffing the what flare by an extra one will buff this lesson by an extra one. So that's four. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. So <laughs> okay, it always sounds complicated when I explain it. And like I still do. Oh, what the fuck is this? Uh, uh, go away. Uh, uh, what the? Delete. Okay, I'm pretty new to this, so uh, yeah, go easy on me with that. Okay, yeah, we figured it out. So let's go over this combo real quick. Um, pretty much the interesting thing with that math is, so the total damage of this combo is 23, like a minimum without buffs, but since it costs 10, you can always get the first multiplier, so it's really 27 um, when you have the three blues. And the interesting thing is, Compared to the blazing combo, due to the multiplier, say if the opponent AB ones this combo, then okay. Well then, okay, I'll explain it because I'm too deep. So if the opponent AB ones this combo, it does the same amount of damage as the blazing combo with a zero for one, and then that goes even further. So if the opponent can AB two this combo, this combo actually out damages the blazing combo because of the multipliers. So it actually plays a little bit better into floating resources. And then, so yeah, that's a super nice thing that I love about it. But on top of that, it's also one of those ones that you don't mind going to your own turn because it's a flare turn. But on top of that, it's a combo where you need a blind flip, right? Because you need to go wildfire, flare, and then whatever you hit off the top, hoping that it's a zero. But if you don't hit a zero, say if you hit this two cost here, now you can pivot so obviously you got to activate kano here but if you see the two costs like this then you can actually pivot your turn if you don't want to commit for the combo now because you don't mind just going back to your turn like okay sure we whiffed here but this combo isn't going to kill and he's holding up resources now and passing priority then all right that's fine i'll just go to my turn because i can still play uh crucible into flare and then activate kano whatever i hit and then play that as well with the flare buff on our own turn. So it's kind of one of the only times where it's free to actually like have a peek. Usually I flame everyone that I coach, like don't ever just take a peek, don't ever just activate Kano because if it is a whiff, which like 90% of the time it is, I swear, then you could have just used that card to block three. And if you block three and then that's the reason you get an extra turn, well, an extra turn means four more cards for the game, which is like 12 damage. So if that block three means you lost 12 damage, if you think of it like that, then you understand like how bad it is to just have a peak. But this is the one specific time where I don't mind it. If you're going, if like you have the potential to go for a wildfire flare combo, because then you take a peak, you see a two cost and you have the chance to just go to your own turn, then it's fine. I actually like it. So yeah, a lot of nuances to this combo. Uh, let's get into how to actually do it. So I'm going to cheat a little bit and just take that just for sake of the combo, just to explain it. But like all other combos where you need to blind flip, obviously just Kano first because we need to see the cost of the card. Here we're going to flip into the zero. Whoa, so lucky. And then next thing is we need to see what color we hit off rags. So because this combo costs 10 resources and you have a 11 minimum with your hand no matter what, if you have three blues and then the one red and chest available, since we have 11 minimum, we can activate Crucible here pretty safely. And then we're not gonna whiff off of a red and then we can't afford the combo. So yeah, I'm gonna activate Crucible here. We're gonna have two floating. Then we get to activate Kano here and then we're gonna respond to this Kano. So respond to the Kano with the Ragamuffins, draw a card, Put the flare back on top and then we're going to let these resolve let that resolve banish the flare as well and then rags finished so what do we do we check our math so how much do we need we need three for striders in wildfire one for flare 
and then how much do we got? We've got four from our hand and chest, and then two floating, so we get two more buffs after this crucible, which is super nice. So let's do that real quick. Activate striders, one floating, get to play the wildfire. That leaves us with two. We'll use our first extra buff on Metacarpus for wildfire, which buffs it by four, not five. Then we get to activate our chest piece, go up to two, play the flare with Metacarpus as well, so that pays for both of those. So this should hit for 10, so four from this in the meta, plus the six from wildfire. And then, so 10 plus six, so this will come in for 17. So all up, it should be a 23 damage combo, but we got three, four buffs, which is plus four, plus four, plus two, which is plus 10. So this should be a 33 damage combo. Whew, okay, so that was a lot. But yeah, so that's one of my favorite combos because of how I explained all the nuances to that one and all the nice little, pretty much like it's super safe is like how, what I love about it. It's safe to just blind flip and then if you whiff it's fine. It's safe to just activate your crucible early and then if you see something weird off the top you don't have to commit your striders, maybe you have to pivot. So it's a really like high skill cap kind of combo that you, you're going for but yeah, with the being a high skill cap, like it's still super chill, if that makes sense. Probably doesn't make sense, but yeah. Okay, we'll do the next one then. So, <laughs> next one, we are going to go over just the wildfire wildfire combo. So, double wildfire combo. This one is pretty much identical to the flare combo, except obviously this deals one extra damage, but it's Bad because it has the same downside as the spindle combo. So the downside being that well, it's an expensive card, you know, so Since it's an expensive card the combo is minimum cost 11, which means if we hit a red off rags we get no buffs um, And then yeah, how it's similar to the flare combo is the multipliers. So the multiplier since it's not a blazing in this uh, combo that means the multiplier is going to be four on the first wildfire, two on the second one, and then one on the last card that we do. But since the, like I said, since it costs 11 resources to do this combo, if you don't hit a blue off rags, then you lose those multipliers. And since this combo is only a 25 damage combo, pretty risky to like risk the whole thing on hitting the blue off of the rags. And then not only that, you also have to hit a zero cost off of your blind Kano. So there's two big RNG factors going on in this combo, which makes it pretty unreliable. I don't really like going for this one too much, but obviously if you're in a situation that you have to do it, this is how I'll do it. So obviously first things first, you need to see how much does that top card cost. So we're gonna activate Kano. Yay, lucky us, we hit a blue dart once again. So blue dart off the top, perfect. You hit a zero cost, that's step number one. Step number two is getting a blue off rag. So here we're going to activate our Storm Striders instead of our Crucible, just in case you hit the red, because if you hit a red, you can't activate, uh, you can't afford the buffs. So we're going to activate Storm Striders here. Respond to that. We've got two floating. Respond to that. And then we're going to activate Kano. Respond to the Kano with Ragamuffins. So Ragamuffins, draw a blue. Ooh, nice. And then put the Wildfire on top. So that's resolved. We'll let this resolve, banish the wildfire we know about. Then again, do the math. So we need two for this wildfire, two for that wildfire. So we need four because we've already activated striders. We've got four from our chest and hand and we've got two floating, so we get two buffs. So we get our multipliers, activate the crucible, uh, play the wildfire from arsenal. We've got two floating, use the second buff on this meta. It goes down to one. So that should hit for six. Activate our chest piece, goes up to two. Play this wildfire here. So this will hit for four plus the six. So this should hit for 10. And then that hit for 10. So now this comes in for 17. One plus 10 plus six. So as you can see, it was the same amount of damage as our flare combo, which is pretty nuts simply because of the, amp the amplifiers being a little bit off and shit. So that's why I love the flare combo so much because it doesn't rely on so much things that go right. So we have to rely on hitting a zero cost off the top and hitting a blue off of here just to like get the same damage as a flare combo, which is it, you can pivot off if you hit something bad. 
you can, if you hit red off the rags, you can still commit for the combo. It's a lot more uh, flexible, you know what I mean? So, yeah, that's a wildfire wildfire combo. Only go for that one, really, if you're in a desperate situation. Yeah, pretty much the only time. Downside is, it's not even a really good hand to get back to your own turn with. So, yeah, a lot of, a lot of the things with our combo is a bit, yeah, a bit iffy, you know what I mean? So, with that, I think we can move on to a little bit more of the complicated lines. So, next ones, these ones are going to be like blind flip lines. Uh, the main things about these ones are the amplifiers and like how different all of that's going to be. So for this first one, we're going to imagine that we just have our standard combo, wildfire blazing line, and then we blind flip a wildfire from the top. So yeah, main thing with these demonstrations is just pay attention to the multipliers. So the multipliers, this is where it gets a little bit crazy and just understanding the math pretty much. So... Here, we're going for a standard combo here. We're gonna activate Kano, and then we see the wildfire off the top. So this is the same as if the wildfire was in our hand. We really want the blue off the, uh, what's this called? The rags for the blazing to be able to afford the whole combo. Um, otherwise, if we get a red, that means we don't get two buffs. But the thing with that is the buffs on these lines is even more because of the multiplicative damage. So a buff on the first wildfire is actually plus six, or AB on it is neg six. Uh, second wildfire in this combo will be three, and then on the blazing will be one, like always. And so yeah, it's very important that we hit the blue. Obviously you can't just set it up, but if you do hit it, it's huge because two buffs on that first wildfire is plus 12. Uh, yeah, I don't even have to stress how much how good that is. So going for it now uh, We just need to activate our rags. So we know we see this here. I Guess you also have the choice here to just shoot the wildfire and then respond with Kano Wait, I didn't even think about this before but yeah, so I would shoot wildfire metacarpus would trigger respond Yeah, respond with activating Kano, and then I'd Ragamuffins, now that I think about it. Oh, interesting. And then, so here you draw a blue, you put the Blazing back on top, uh, let that resolve, let the Kano resolve, banishing the Blazing. And then, I guess here, oh no, because you get punished if you hit a red, right? Because like here, now you can respond to this wildfire by just going Crucible with the Floating, and then Striders and then wildfire with this blue and then activate the spellfire cloak to do the metacarpus on it so this will still hit for six and now this will come in for ten but we can't afford the the metacarpus on this because we don't have enough resources but yeah this will deal six this will come in for ten and then this will come in for sixteen but it will get buffed by sixteen as well so it comes in for thirty two so yeah, that's a lot of damage. How much is that? 32 plus 16 is 48. So 48 damage. But minimum, if you hit a red off the rags, then it's only 36. So we got a big ass plus 12 from the two buffs off of this. But lines like these, where if you have the E pot, just makes it a lot more safer. Means you can hit reds off the rags and stuff and still be able to afford these the plus 12 from the buffs or maybe you can afford the two middle spells metacarpusing them and then you still get plus four on the combo if you hit the blues as well with it so yeah the multipliers pretty crazy on that but we'll do the next even more crazier multipliers is the wildfire blazing blazing so yeah let's get into that one we'll set it up like that blazing blazing so this one's going to have even more crazy multipliers. So the first wildfire is going to be worth 7 per buff or minus 7 per AB. So very important that you get the buffs here. The great thing is though, if you're going for this combo, it only costs 9 resources. So because two blazings, are, they cost 0. And so it costs 9 resources and the minimum damage is 28. But since it costs 9... The beautiful thing is we have a minimum 11 resources so you can afford the two buffs and two buffs 
on the wildfire is plus 14. Plus 14 puts it up to 32, 42 damage. So minimum, this is a 42 damage, even if you hit red off rags. But if you hit a blue, that means you get the plus two on the middle blazing, and then you get the plus one on the last blazing. So hitting a blue off the rags is only plus three damage. Obviously the three damage could matter a lot, but I think there'll be a lot of times where it doesn't. So interesting to think about that. But yeah, so let's get into how to do this combo. Pretty simple, just activate Kano like always, see what, what card it is. Oh, look at that, it's a Blazing Aether, we're so lucky. And then, all you gotta do here is we gotta see what color from the rags. Since it's a zero cost, we know that the whole line's gonna cost nine resources. So pretty safe to just activate Crucible here. Activate Crucible, two floating like always. Then activate Kano. And then Ragamuffin's in response. We get to draw a card, see what color it is. Put the Blazing back on top. Let these resolve. Let the Kano resolve, banishing another Blazing. That's when your opponent just FFs, leaves the game, and calls you some slurs or some shit on Telashar, but that's all good. Comes with the trade, brother. And then, so yeah, now you do your math. Now we've got three resources needed for Wildfire and Storm Striders. We've got three from our chest and our two floating, so we get three buffs extra from our spindle, and we've already paid for a buff. So, pretty nice. You get a plus multiplier of seven, plus two, and then one, so it's plus 10 to our 28 minimum damage. So, all you gotta do, activate your striders, then you play your wildfire, that puts you to two, you get to use the metacarpus, so pay one for that, that comes in for six. Uh, don't even have to activate Storm or Spellfire yet. Now we play the Blazing, use the Floating to pay for the meta. So that will come in for 6, plus 6, so it's 12, then plus 1, so it's 13. And then we get to activate our Spellfire Cloak, play the last one, and use that Spellfire Cloak resource to pay for the meta here. So, okay, that's just way too much damage. How much is it? So it's 28, and then it's plus 14, so it's 42, and then it's plus 3, so 45. So this is 45 damage all up. Yeah, okay, so pretty nuts if you hit it like that. You're pretty lucky. Um, yeah, so now we'll go on to the next one. There's not much to talk about there because you just blind flipped. You're going for a wildfire blazing combo there, right? And then you just blind flip into the blazing. So not much thoughts behind it. I think the key things here is just that multiplier on the wildfire being seven, which is very important. So... If the opponent has no AB, then yeah, they're just dead, obviously. But if they do have AB, they do get to block seven of seven damage out of your fourteen. Uh, but I guess that puts the math at because since this is dealing forty-five damage, if they are forty-five, yeah, since it's dealing forty-five damage and then they can block fourteen of it, I'd say around thirty-one is the safe point for this one, isn't it? Because that still kills through AB two. Okay, so I'm learning things while I'm doing this. This is nice, this is nice. But yeah, we'll go on to the next one. So this one is probably the more common one where you have, uh, well, more common for me because I like this one so much is the wildfire flare combo. And then how I like to always just have a have a quick peek when it, when it makes sense, you know? So yeah, imagine we're going for our wildfire flare combo. Activate Kano and then you see a fucking blazing off the top. You're, you're thinking, oh my god, I'm the fucking best player in the world, Michael Hamilton, get out of the way. So, here, pretty good spot to be in, obviously. This combo is going to cost 10 resources, because this costs 0. So, 10 resources, you have a minimum 11, which means you get, you're guaranteed 1 buff at least, no matter what. And the multipliers is going to be 6 on the wildfire, 3 on the flare, and then 1 on the blazing, like always. And then the minimum damage is 33. So, when your hand is 3 blues though, your minimum damage is going to be 39, because you can always afford one buff of the wildfire. And then, if you get a blue, you get the second buff, which puts it up to 45. And then, you also get one buff on the flare, which puts it to 48. So, yeah, pretty hard for the opponent to stop that. I think a big thing though, is the last combo was a multiplier of 7 on the wildfire, so... The multiplier being 6 is actually pretty beneficial when you're shooting this into AB. But I say that, but they're probably just dead if 
you flip a blazing on your wildfire flare combo anyway. So, uh, yeah, since it's a cheap combo, I always like to do the crucible, uh, just in case you do have to pivot off of your combo for whatever reason. So crucible, don't let it resolve yet. Activate Kano, then activate the ragamuffins in response. So we're gonna draw a card, put the flare back on top, let these resolve. This banishes this, this is resolved. Do the math real quick. So one for flare, three for these. We've got three in our hand and then we've got three floating. So we get three more buffs than what we have with just Crucible. So we'll go through the motions real quick, activate the Storm Striders there, play the Wildfire. So we'll still have one floating and then activate Metacarpus on it. Oh wait, no, we'd have two floating, then we activate Metacarpus on it. And then we'll flip our chest here. So we go up to two, play the flare, shoot that as well. So this hit for six, this is gonna hit for 10. So this is gonna come in for X equals 16, but it also gets buffed by 16, so 32 as well. So 32 plus 16, 48 damage all up. And this is a lot more safer into the AB because of the multipliers is six and three instead of this being seven, like on the previous combo. So pretty interesting. That's why, another reason why I'm in love with like wildfire flare combos, just cause even when you hit the nuts, it's still safe. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Flare is just like my favorite card, uh, I guess. Uh, have a little thing with Flare or some shit. Uh, yeah, to follow up the Flare talk then, I guess I'll just go over all the Flare lines. So, <laughs> let's just go over the Flare lines now. Uh, so we've got to reset everything up. Uh, what's the first Flare line we'll go over then? Flare lessons, maybe? Yeah, I like it, I like it. So... Flare Lesson is a pretty common one. Uh, I have killed a lot of opponents with this one. Um, pretty much super safe, obviously because Lessons makes it super safe because your blind Kano is guaranteed to be a Lesson, or to be a Blazing, sorry. Um, also safe because if you do just get to go to your own turn, then you have the options of, if you have a three card hand, you can do your Flare, like a uh, Flare and a Kano to present a mate like huge damage if they a b it then you're happy and then set up the lesson or if you know you have to combo next turn and you don't want to risk anything then you can just like play the lesson on your own turn and go grab the wildfire or some shit set up the wildfire on the top but if your opponent is like an opponent that likes to a b a lot then maybe going for the lesson line is actually more risky because if you go lesson and then the a b3 you can't find the wildfire you could lesson for lesson but if the AB3, AB3, then you can't, probably can't find the wildfire, although you do take two cards out of them. So, yeah, there's a lot going on with just seeing this hand when you are uh, in game with this. But, yeah, I digress. That's the most, this is the most common non-wildfire -com, non combo line that I use. So, very cheap combo. Only costs nine resources because... Storm Striders and Flare is two, and then you need four for Lessons itself and Kano into Lessons, so that's at six, and then three more for the Blind Flip, or not the Blind Flip, for the Flip after Lessons, which is gonna be a Blazing, which is nine. And yeah, so like I said, if you have the three blues, even if you flip red off rags, you have 11 resources minimum, so you get plus two buffs, which is super nice start. So the damage of this combo without the buffs is 18, Multipliers on Flare though is going to be plus 4 or neg 4 from AB. So you get a minimum plus 8 from buffing the Flare. So it can be a 26 damage combo if you hit a red off rags. If you hit a blue, that means you get a multiplier off the Lesson and the Blazing, which is plus 2 and plus 1. So it's another 3, which puts it up to 29 damage. So 29 damage from a non-wildfire line. Pretty nice. You, you like to take those ones and you don't need any potions. So that's like my favorite part about this because usually you go sacrifice some tempo in order to play out potions and such, but if you're playing in a way that you've just been throwing spindles at them on your own turn, flares on your own turn, lessons on your own turn, whatever, and just stripping cards from them, uh, rather than slowing down and playing your pots, usually means your opponent's in a situation where if they want to play the game, they have to tap out, and if they tap out into a hand like this, this is how you'd kill them. So how I like to do it is for anything that has something to do with lessons, it's pretty free to just activate Kano first and just remember that's our blazing at the end. So activate Kano, we're gonna respond to this one. 
active by activating Kano again. We don't have two floating. So Kano again, then we get to activate uh, rags. No, no, no. Well, oh, shit. Okay, so we got to do a crucible. Sorry. So crucible, we do have two floating. Respond to the crucible, activate Kano, and then we're going to respond to the Kano with the rags. Draw a card. Whether it's a blue or a red doesn't really matter. So in this case, we've got a red, but we still get two buffs on the, on the flare. So here, I'm going to put the uh, lesson back on top from the rags. Then let the Kano resolve, banish that lesson. We'll let this Crucible resolve as well. And then responding to this Kano activation, uh, do our math real quick, sorry. So after the rags, we need one, two, and then three from lessons. We've got two floating, one in hand. So we've got a spare buff right here. Uh, so we just activate our Storm Striders here, shoot the flare with the floating, Metacarpus will trigger, we know we can afford one buff, so we'll pitch the red here. This will come in for five. Comes in for five, buffs the next spell, so we're going to activate our Spell Cloak right here, shoot that. This will come in for three plus five. Uh, can't afford the Metacarpus because we hit a red, so this will come in for eight. So eight, and then we get to go find the Blazing. Let this Kano resolve from the start, and then we get to shoot that as well. So all up, this dealt uh, 18 plus 8, which is 26. 26 damage, right? Yeah, hopefully I did that, right? So 26 damage, and that's even with a red. We didn't even have to hit four blues. So yeah, nothing to scoff at, nothing to scoff at. But yeah, this, this is one of the combos where it usually comes up situationally. Uh, it's often correct to not shoot it there if it doesn't kill, or if it, if it puts them down to like three or some shit like that, I'm pretty happy to just put their life total to like super low where not even their AB is going to be able to save them in their next turn from my blind flips. So yeah, I like just sending this whenever I can see it, and it's like you're getting the most payoff for it, but... Yeah, beautiful thing is, uh, AB, the multipliers as well, so multiplier is 4 on the flare, not 5, like your wildfire combos, so that's another key thing, so it does play pretty well into AB, even when you're going for it, so yeah, that's your first flare line, flare lessons, guess, what's the next one, we'll do flare flare, I guess, flare flare next, you get out of my way, and then uh, you can go up there, wait, where do those blues go, I guess they're here. So we'll put this here, put that back. So next one is going to be a flare flare line. So pretty similar to wildfire wildfire line, but both the flares are cheaper. And then this first flare isn't going to buff the third spell. So this one, you do need a blind flip. So I always recommend flipping first. But yeah, like the great thing is since the line only costs nine resources all up, that usually means you can afford a two cost, even if you blind flip into a two cost. If you blind flip into a zero cost, that just means you're guaranteed buffs on the flares, which is super nice as well. Uh, with the buffs mentioned, the multipliers are plus four on the first flare, plus two on the second, and then plus one on the last card, whatever it's going to be. And then the damage is 19. So 19, pretty much guaranteed to get plus two buffs, which is plus eight. So it's 27 damage for a flare flare line if you hit a zero cost and a red which is another super nice damage line. And with the multipliers not being five, they're four instead. You can choose a couple people that do the math wrong. Uh, I've definitely done this more than once. So uh, let's do it then. How I like to do this one, since you need a blind flip, you gotta activate Kano first to see how much this card costs. In this case, it costs two. So costing two is usually pretty bad. It means you need to hit a blue off rags to afford your buffs. But in this case, it doesn't matter too much because this line is so cheap. So with that said, what we do next is we need to be able to activate that rags. So it's a cheap line, but we hit a two cost here. So I am actually just going to activate Storm Striders first. So Striders, and then we're going to respond to that. Don't let these resolve by activating Kano. And then respond to the Kano with Ragamuffins. We get to draw a card. We draw a blue, nice. And then we get to put the flare back on top of the rags resolve, Kano resolves. After the rags, we do our math. So we've got three resources, six resources, and then we need one from flare, two from flares, 
and then four from Voltic Bolt, so we get two buffs still. So super fortunate there, even though we had a zero or uh, two cost. But two buffs, so we'll activate Crucible, and then let the Storm Strides resolve, shoot the flare, none floating, pay for the Metacarpus. So go back to two floating. This will come in for five. Then we can shoot this flare right now. So this will come in for three plus five. We can't afford the meta because that costs one. So we need two for the Voltic. So five plus three, so that's eight. Then we can activate our chest piece, goes up to two, and then we can shoot our Voltic Bolt here. So this will come in for five plus eight, which is 13 plus three, so it's 16. So all up, how much that is, that's 19 minimum plus 8 from this, which is 27, but then this is 2 more damage than the 0 for 1, 27, so this is 29 damage. Yeah, okay, so even though I'm here doing the math and I have it written out in front of me on the side here, I'm still having to figure it out, so that's why I'm making this video. So, <laughs> hopefully it can help you guys a little bit as well while we're going through all of this. Because we still got plenty more to go. So, the next flare line is a flare blazing line. This one, pretty RNG to go for. You're probably only going for this one when you're pretty much forced to. And, yeah, so maybe this is just like you drew into this, so you're forced into doing a line like this. Because it's actually kind of low damage is my problem with it. So low damage because it's 14 damage. Not only that, it's a 8 costed uh, line. So if you hit a 0 off the top, then it only costs 8 resources to do. But the problem with 8 is, yeah, you have 11 resources minimum when if you get a red of frags, which means you get 3 buffs. But that doesn't really mean that much because... The total damage of this combo is 14. The multipliers is four on the flares, two on the middle one, and then one on the blazing. And so we're always gonna be able to afford the flare buffs, which puts it up to 18, 22 damage. But so now if we hit blue off the rags, it's only like plus two damage, plus three damage. And plus in three damage, yeah, maybe it can kill now, but it's still a very low damage combo. It's probably one of those ones where, yeah, so if this was my hand and I'm getting attacked for lethal and so they can kill me if I block three and I, I try to go to my own turn, play like a flare turn with a Kano activation and then Arsenal the Blazing. If, yeah, if I can't do that and then I know I have to go now, then I'll send this combo. So it's one of those ones. So let's get into how I do it. Since there's a blind flip, always do that first. See how much the card costs. Here we hit the zero cost. Um, since it's a cheap combo, you get to activate your Crucible instead of your Striders. So that leaves us with two floating. Respond to that with activating Kano. And then activating Ragamuffins in response to that. We get to put the Blazing back on top. Let these resolve. Oh, what was that? Slow-mo. Get to flip this as well. So two zero costs, which is super nice. But we need two for Striders and Flare and we've got six resources. So this was the problem I was talking about. So we can afford so many buffs, but we just don't have spells to buff is the problem. So I wonder if this is a special case. So uh, I'm gonna go through it real quick. So Storm Striders, uh, do the flare. We've got none floating. You always wanna pay for the Metacarpus here because the multiplier is plus four. So it's pretty much better than any blind flip you can hit. Um, but yeah, that's a little hint on what I was thinking because you could use these three resources to just blind flip rather than getting plus three damage, which probably makes a bit of sense, right? Because this will come in for five. Uh, but if you blind flip into a zero, it's plus one damage and then plus one extra from the blazing. But like you might as well rather just put the metacarpus on this, which is plus two damage anyway, and then you don't have to risk this two damage. So yeah, okay. Well, that's another good thing I learned right now. So this comes in for five. We get to shoot the flare, oh, not flare, the dart. This will come in for one plus five and pay for the meta. So one plus five is six and then seven from meta. And then we also got one more floating to pay for the metacarpus on blazing. 
I guess it's pretty nice if you just send this and then you can move into a post combo game because you still have Spellfire Cloak. But yeah, the thing is, if you're sending this combo, you probably want it to kill. Otherwise, it's probably better to just go to your own turn with the flare anyway. So yeah, I think the key thing is the multipliers here is four, two, and one. But yeah, very rare that you're going for this one. It's just one of those combos where there's a blind flip. So key thing is making sure that you blind flip first and make sure you check what color is off your rags. Why did they go to my hand just then? So that's weird, okay. But we'll go on to the next one. So next one is Flare Spindle. Reset everything. I wish there was just a reset button, bro. There probably is and I'm just wigging out. So this one's pretty interesting because the wildfire spindle combo costs 11 resources, which makes it risky. This one is still risky, yeah, but since it costs 10 resources, it does alleviate, alleviate a lot of the risk, so don't mind it as much. Uh, but I say that, but it's another one of those combos where I could just go to my own turn and just play a 4 card hand spindle, or if I wanted to block a card, I can play a 3 card hand spindle with a spare Kano, or even block 6 and then play a 2 card hand spindle. So it's more often than it's correct to just play the spindle instead to try and search for the wildfire and then hopefully this is our hand next turn. So letting the op set that up. But yeah, in this case, you're probably just sending it if you get a really good window or you're just feeling lucky or some shit. I don't know. So this one, since it's a spindle combo, I'm probably going to activate Kano first and then respond to all of it. I think that's safe to do. But I guess if you do it like that, no, you do have to do it like this because we can't just activate Kano first then let it flip and see it resolve. So we activate Kano uh, and then we respond to this. Since it costs 10, we can afford to just do the Crucible since we have 11 minimum if we hit a red off rags. So we've got two floating here. Respond to the Crucible, we're gonna activate Kano again and then activate the Ragamuffin, so draw. I'm gonna put the spindle back on top. Let this resolve, banish the spindle. Ragamuffins happen, so let's do our math. We've got six resources. We need four resources for these cards down here. Crucible's already done, so we get two more buffs. Two buffs on the Amplifier 4 is pretty good, so let's do that. Activate the Storm Striders, goes to one. Flare uses that. Pay one for the Metacarpus. We've got two floating there, so this deals five. Then we can even activate our Spellfire Cloak, it goes up to three. And then we can shoot the spindle with meta as well, which is actually kind of nice. So this comes in for four plus five is nine, then 10. So still get the op 10. Obviously the opting is a little bit, it's probably more risky. No, it's just 100% is more risky than the wildfire line because you had a small out with your spindle opt on the wildfire line that you can just find tone blue blue and then two zero costs and then shoot those with the wildfire buff. But key thing is, this is a flare, not a wildfire, so those cards don't get buffed. So you really have to find the blazing. So maybe you only go for this line if you haven't seen a single blazing all game. Uh, probably has more viability there, especially if you can find a tome off of it. So you just find a tome, uh, blue blue, Kano into two blazings. Well, obviously if you find that, you're just murdering everyone. I don't even know why I brought that up, but yeah. So. This will deal five, that deals 10. So he's taking 15. The blazing will come in for 15, which is 30. And then if you find another blazing after that, you just dealt 60 damage, which is, yeah, not bad. Uh, but yeah, pretty risky to go for. Uh, not many use cases, except for what I said. So you're forced to go, you haven't seen that many blazing, something like that. Most often you're better off just going to your own turn and shooting the spindle on our own turn if you do find the blazing on the opt on our own turn it's fine to just use that spare blue kano into it and shoot him again for another two to five extra damage and yeah so with that i guess we can go on to the next one because so this one is going to be a lessons line next so the lessons lines are super practical because it's very often that as soon as you find your first lessons uh, and then you shoot it with the crucible your opponent a b threes it and then you're just finding another lesson to put on top So it's very often that most turns of most games. You probably have a lessons in your hands at some point So that's what makes these super practical. So imagine that we have this and then 
uh, something like a lesson blazing blazing line. So lesson blazing blazing uh, it costs eight resources. It's only twelve damage, but yeah, the amplifiers is three from the first lesson, two from the first blazing, and then one on the last one. So the amplifiers kind of suck. But, like I said, it only costs 8 resources, you're guaranteed 3 buffs, which is plus 6 from 2 buffs on this, and plus 2 here, which is plus 8, so it's a 20 damage combo. 21 damage if you hit a blue, which isn't that bad, and it's completely, like, it's straight up. So, if your opponent just fully taps out and they're like 20 life, well, I mean, they're just probably dead to anything, but this is one of the lines you can go for. Um... Yeah, so this is probably only a line that you do go for if it kills them on the spot. Because otherwise, if this is my hand, my first thing I always think about is just going Crucible, like going to my turn and just going Crucible, Lessons. I've got one floating, so I can grab Chain Lightning and then Kano, use the floating to play the chain and then I can play this as well. And then that's just 4 plus 3, so it's 14 damage. Uh, on our own turn and then Arsenal the last card maybe but if it's a blue maybe I just Kano or maybe I even just Metacarpus this on my own turn because amplifiers and all that but yeah so I'm really going for this if it's guaranteed kill because if you can just get to your own turn and do that instead it's probably better but to go through what you do on this combo uh, since it's a lesson line I do like to activate Kano first Kano first and then I guess you Striders here uh, yeah, so we activate Striders, and then two floating here, we will activate Kano now, respond to that with Rags, draw a card, doesn't really matter what color you get, because the blue one resource is going to be wasted, so I guess you get to keep your spell fire, but I digress. So Ragamuffins is done, Kano, we banish that blazing that we know about, let the Storm Striders resolve, we only need one from the lesson, and we've got six resources so we get five buffs but you can't actually do five buffs um i guess the key thing here is can we afford to go lesson lesson so if we go lesson let this resolve okay we're about to pivot this turn aren't we so this deals three damage uh grab another lesson put it on top let this Kano resolve put that there eh? and then shoot this with the floating and then this will deal three damage as well uh, and now with that one we can put a blazing on top and then activate Kano go grab a blazing and then blazing blazing Wait, I had spell fire as well to activate crucible on the first one Okay, so if you hit the blues off the rags, then you just pivot it into a less and less and blazing blazing line Okay, interesting interesting. So that cost 13. So that cost 12 resources. I think that was later in my in my guide here on the side but okay so i'm bro i've learned like so many new things already and i've been playing this hero for like a year straight so yeah since the line costs eight resources and you have a minimum 11 if you do hit a blue off the top you go up to 13 which does mean you can afford to get another lessons in the middle which is obviously a lot more damage so how much this deals it deals four here three here seven and then 14 so all up 28 damage 28 damage is well that's a lot of damage i'm not gonna lie so don't mind it actually i don't mind it i, I might test this more in game because i don't often go for it because of the reasons like i said before like how i just go for the lessons and the chain into blazing most of the time okay okay i'm learning so that's cool that's cool let's go on to the next lesson line then but now we're going to go on to the super advanced ones, so the potion enabled lines is what I titled it. So these lines can only happen if you have either one E-pot, two E-pots, or a D-pot. The main thing with these is most of them are pitch stacked lines, so you're pretty much guaranteed on what you're going to hit. But I'll go over the first couple ones because they don't need to be pitch stacked. Instead, you just need an e pot and then you can like think of going for these lines. So a little bit more practical in their uses. So this one is if we have it like that. So it's just your standard wildfire blazing combo. So 
what we're going to do here instead though is we're going to go for a four spell line so you can go for a four spell line here because we have the e part so you do need to get pretty lucky on two blind flips which is already rng reliant and then you also need the blue off of rags because minimum we're going to have 11 resources like always but we've got the plus two from epot so it goes up to 13. so we can afford a zero cost and a one cost off the blind flips even if we hit a red but if we hit a blue we can afford two we can afford a two cost and a one cost but then we lose our buffs so we really prefer to hit two zero costs and get a blue off rags so we can afford buffs on everything because the big thing with this one is the amplifiers go crazy so the multiplier on the wildfire is plus seven because i'm not even going to explain why it's going to be plus seven just take my word for it and then the two middle spells is going to be plus two on the first one plus two on the next one and then plus one on the blazing um and yeah so the total cost 12 resources if they're both zero for ones it's a 32 damage line 32 damage but yeah plus sevens on the wildfire depending on blues and rags and all of that jazz so uh what color was this yeah we'll keep that there put that there it was a blue i'm just gonna chuck this in my hand just to make it simple so when you have one e-pot out and you draw onto the wildfire blazing line you can heavily consider going for a four spell line if you activate Kano first and then you see a zero cost so as soon as I see this zero cost I know that if I hit a blue off the rags I'm gonna have wasted resources and wasted resources obviously it doesn't matter if it just kills but if it doesn't kill using our full metacarpus buffs on everything if we hit the blue you might as well go for that extra spell because it's like your way out your way to win the game so if we're going for that, I do like activating Kano again. If we're going for the four spell line, if it's not guaranteed lethal with uh, three spell and full buffs. So in that case, we really want to hit the zero, which we do here. Then we get to activate Kano. Activate Ragamuffins as well. Draw a card. <coughs> Wait, so can we still do it with this? So we put the Belladium back on top. I don't think we can. Activate this Kano. But this happens because we've got none floating. But all three of these cost zero. We've got one, two, three, four resources here. And then we only need three for this. So I guess you still can. Obviously we lose a big multiplier of seven on the wildfire because we only get one buff on this. But it's not the end of the world. So we get to activate our e -pot. Actually, I like pitching my card. So we'll do this. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter. Activate e -pot. We go up to two resources. Then activate our Spellfire, go up to three. Activate Crucible, back down to two. Then we get to do Wildfire. So we're holding our Metacarpus because we can't afford it. This will hit for five. This will hit for seven. This will hit for seven again. So this will come in for 14 plus five plus five. So this will come in for 24. So 24 plus 14, 38 plus six. No, plus five. 38, 43. 43 damage and that's off red from rags so key thing to remember there though is 43 damage but they get to their ab1 is neg 7 which is big so 43 could go back down to 36 which can go to 29 after ab2 if they have ab3 it goes down to 22 damage so very weak into ab but obviously if it's your out you go for it you can only really go for it if you have that extra e pot and it's still very risky because you need to hit zero costs and you really need to hit blue off rags so nice little case there that you can uh, think about when you hit an e pot is just being able to do a four spell wildfire blading line um next one looks like uh yeah it looks like i'm going over a bit of a high rolly one. Oh no so this was a pitch stack combo so next one's going to be wildfire wildfire random spell blazing so this is obviously one that you definitely have to pitch stack and you also oh well, in the pitch stacking plan you definitely have e pots out uh, i think this was one that i wanted to write out because it's a good example on why the pitch stacking plan 
works in the first place. So uh, let's go through it. Because you'll have a lot of e-pots out. Say we only have two, even though you should have three. If this is how you pitch stacked, and then say it's like that. So say we had our pitch stack. This line is wildfire, wildfire, any spell blazing. It only costs 14 resources, so we should have 11 minimum uh, plus 6, which is 17. 17 resources, so you get 3 buffs, and then the multipliers are on the wild. First wildfire, it's plus 10. The second wildfire is plus 5. The third spell is plus 2, and then blazing is plus 1. So. And with those as your multipliers, the damage, the minimum damage for 14 resources is 62. So <laughs> this is why the pitch stacking plan is just like insane. Because if you are dealing this much damage, so that's your line. It costs 14. It deals 62 damage. But most often you have 17 resources. So it's plus 10 from this twice. So it's plus 20. And then it's plus an extra 5 because you can also afford to buff this with meta as well. So plus 25 is 87. So it's an 87 damage combo. And it's just like the most simple thing to set up. Uh, so yeah, we'll go over it I guess. But obviously this is a super high level uh, state of the game to be in. If you're in the state of the game, you're probably super experienced with Kano and you know all your math anyway. So we'll go over quick. Imagine we're at our pitch stack, we just activate Kano, hit the wildfire off the top, and then pretty much, yeah, I think you can just do anything how you want because, yeah, when you're at your pitch stack, you just understand that, uh, how to do your shit because you know how to pitch stack. So, we'll go over quick, pretty much, I'll just shoot my, or activate both of these, I have one floating. I'm gonna shoot this wildfire here, um, pitching this, Metacarpus will trigger, pay one and then we can activate this go up to two shoot the blazing or shoot the second wildfire we can respond to this metacarpus by activating the ragamuffins drawing a card put a card back on top activate Kano with that and then crack our two potions we got the four resources here and then we can activate Kano hit a one cost so we can't afford the metacarpus now so metacarpus is done but uh, yeah, this comes in for 6, then the wildfire comes in for 10, and then we can shoot this. This comes in for 2 plus 10, which is 12 plus 6, which is 18. And then, so, this comes in for 18 plus 10, so 28 plus 12, no, plus 20, yeah, plus 20, so it's 38 plus 12, which is 40? I don't know, I've fucking lost count, so... They're dead. They're 100% dead. And then, yeah, so the insane thing is... It's like an 80-something damage combo. Even if they AB3, it's minus 30 on this. But 87 minus 30 is 57. So they're still dead. And then if they AB3 on the next thing as well... AB3 on the next wildfire is minus 15. So... 57 minus 15 is still 42, which is their whole life still. So, yeah, this line is your most common pitch stack line, pretty much for this reason shown here, because it goes through AB6. Uh, but obviously it's even more than this, because of most of the times this middle spell is like a lesson instead, or a flare, or another blazing if you're pitch stacking. So, yeah, I just wanted to bring this one up because... It pretty much shows and explains like why the pitch stacking plan is a thing because this is just straight up unstoppable I say that and then someone's gonna talk about feign death or some shit like that. So don't be the one that, don't be that guy. Yeah, you're not that guy pal uh, But yeah, so I think the rest of them I will just leave because yeah, we went through a lot of them uh, I think we're here yeah, we're here and then so there's a lot more but they're all like pitch stacking ones and then the main things for these is I just want you guys to pay attention to the multipliers because some of these multipliers get insane um, but yeah hopefully this video helped a little bit just going super in depth in all of these combos 
main things to point out when you guys are looking through this uh, document for yourselves is just pay attention to the costs. Understand that 11 is the minimum resources that we can have if we have three blues, um, because then you can hit a red off rags. Most is 13, so when it, when it costs 13, that means you can go for it, but you're not gonna be able to afford the buffs. So, without potions, uh, I say that, but yeah. I've got all these categorized. I put all like my notes on the combos underneath, put the multipliers, the damage, the cost, the actual combo, and then yeah, I've got them like labeled so when you have a potion, all these lines are enabled. A lot of them pitch attacking ones, lessons ones, flare lines, all that jazz, blind foot lines, wildfire lines, format at the top. And then yeah, I've also got that screenshot that I shared at the start. So yeah, hopefully we can just uh, post this one on YouTube because I think that was a decent one take, Drake. I'm not gonna lie, but. Like and share the video or whatever. How the fuck do I do my intros? I've forgotten. This was a long ass video and I'm a bit brain fried right now. I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, so hopefully this video was helpful. Uh, if you guys got any more questions about Kano combos or whatever, make sure to hit me up. Uh, if you have uh, more, if you wanna go more in depth than Kano, then definitely check out my Patreon. I've got like, it's just pure Kano content, like super in depth. I even do Kano coaching. Got infinite referrals on people saying how much they love it. Make sure you check that out. I also post the Kano coaching sessions on my Patreon as well for the boss tier, along with you getting a free coaching once per month, which a lot of people have really enjoyed as well. So that's super good. I also leave my deck list for Kano, I guess, that I'm using right now, and just chuck that down there as well so you can play with that. And yeah, guess that's it for the video. So thanks for watching.